Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Raphael. She says, first of all, thank you so much for all the content you share freely with everyone. It's incredibly generous and helpful, and your passion for the new paradigm is amazing. Thank you. I am pretty passionate about it. She says, I've been struggling with bulimia for four years and first heard about your work on a podcast and immediately got your book. I can tell it's the truth. At least it resonates deeply with me, and I really believe that this is going to be how I recover. I've discussed it extensively with my boyfriend, who's been trying to quit smoking himself, and we're both really psyched and in tune with what you say. At least we think we are, because for now, we still give in to our urges, and I'm personally starting to feel stuck again. And in all honesty, it scares me. So my question is really simple. You mentioned that once we see it, really see it, the fact that all of our urges and uncomfortable feelings, or any feeling for that matter, isn't us, and that attaching personal meaning to them is giving them power, and that's what keeps us stuck. But why do you think some people struggle to really get it at a transformative level? How come I can tell myself when an urge arises, yep, it's just thought, it has nothing to do with me, it'll pass, and there's nothing I have to do about it, and let go for a bit, but then it comes back, and I have to see it over and over again and again and again until I eventually give in purely because I'm exhausted and the seeing it as it is part has worn me down. I think that's what's happening, but I'm not even sure, by the way. Yes. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I just wish I understood what's missing for me to relax into this new vision of my thoughts. Is it just about getting used to it and keeping at it until it's effortless? Only it doesn't seem like that's what you're describing in your books and videos. Such a great, 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 great question. Um, and such a common question. So first of all, you're, uh, well, first of all, let me go to your very first paragraph when you say that um, this resonates on a deep level and you and your boyfriend talk about it and you feel like this is, like this understanding that we are okay, we are habit free right now, that urges and thoughts and feelings are all the same thing. They're all just psychology. They're all our experience moving through us. They're all safe. They all move. We don't have to act on any of them, although we all will at times. We don't have to. It's like, a, you know, this experience moves through us. That, that getting a feel for that, it sounds like you're saying, and, and discussing it with your boyfriend and getting, you know, that resonates on such a deep level. And you can see how that has the power and potential to to help you stop bulimia, you know, to help you stop with that habit. And and I I love that right there. Now I get it, trust me, I totally get it. How easy it is can be for your mind to come in and say, Yeah, but I'm still doing the behaviors. Yeah, but shouldn't I feel better? Yeah, but my 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 thoughts and feelings still scare me. All those yeah buts where we're so oriented toward the physical world, our, our psychology, our experience, our thoughts and feelings, what we did yesterday, what we're going to do. We're so used to just being pointed there and looking there. It's visible. It's tangible. It's, you know, it's so much, it's so much easier to just see that. So having this kind of vague, growing knowing within you that, wait a minute, I think things aren't as they appear. I think I'm not all this stuff. I think I won't necessarily be, have this label, this diagnosis slapped on me for life. Like you're seeing that you're waking up to that in a deep way. And for a little while it is kind of vague or it can be, you know, it can be kind of touch and go, <laughs> kind of like you have conversations with your boyfriend or you watch a video or you take in something and you're like, yes, that makes so much sense. I can see it. I can see how that could free me. I can see how this is true. And then we go back into all this, right? Yeah, but what about what I ate for breakfast? And what about this feeling and that? I really, really want you and everyone to hear that is so normal. That is just that is just like the way it goes. It, it's probably how it is with anything, with a lot of things we learn, except we don't really care about those so much. They don't have as much at stake for us, so we don't even recognize it. So like when, you know, for example, if you're learning a language or you're learning math or something, you you kind of get a feel for how it goes and this the the 
form of a sentence, the structure of a sentence, or how to do a certain math problem. You kind of have a little insight into it. It feels like a thing. And then you forget, <laughs> and then you get distracted, or then you go back to the old way that you used to say things that's incorrect or whatever. But as you keep looking back, that vague sense of kind of seeing something with new eyes, seeing something in a new way, being kind of grounded in a different way of viewing things, that continues to grow. So if you haven't already, and I'm guessing you have, I want you to listen to the podcast episode from last Monday. It was Emily's change story. Emily's story is a perfect example of this exactly. So I'll let you listen and see. But basically, Emily was around this and and felt so similar to what you're seeing. Like, gosh, I know there's something to this, but her habit was running rampant. She still felt completely powerless in her behaviors and just kind of overtaken by the whole thing. But but as she kept looking, now she didn't, it wasn't about effort and it wasn't about anything she did in particular, except that she she started to know, okay, I'm gonna look more toward or at least keep looking toward that growing knowing, that growing feeling of resonance and insight within me of, of what if things are actually this way. And yes, I'm human. I'm going to get caught up in the appearance of things. I'm going to get caught up in how it looks and how it feels and what I did. But I'm going to trust this one more. I'm going to keep looking here. That's exactly what happened for Emily. And, and it's like the scales just started to shift to where the feeling, the, the feelings of peace, the little moments of, of this resonating with her and her just deeply seeing it. And they were just tiny little moments. They are for everyone, I think. Honestly, they are for me too. They're just tiny little glimpses. But but we start to kind of trust them more and more. And, and without us having to do it, in some ways kind of identify with them more and more. Like, oh, there's something to life that I don't understand. It's not how it appears over here that starts to like carry more weight, you know? So then you have a feeling or a thought or you do something you wish you didn't do or whatever. And eh, okay, that's some, that's some floating by psychology. I don't have to worry about that. We were reoriented, repointed back to something that's bigger than that, more stable than that. For Emily, that's how it went. And and little by little, her habit just started to fall away. And again, it got way worse before it fell away, before it got better. But she kept looking toward what resonated with her. So that's where you are, it sounds, in a lot of ways. And for everybody listening, that's where, where I think we are a lot of times, especially early on in this. And it's just such a great reminder and a great message to kind of look toward what we know is true rather than all the stuff that we think we need to fix and change. Because focusing on your psychology isn't going to help. Focusing on what's wrong, what should have happened, what shouldn't have happened, not going to help you. Looking toward what's beneath your psychology is what's going to help. And it's hard sometimes, but we just keep doing it. So, um, so yes, you mentioned that I mentioned that, uh, you mentioned that I mentioned that once we really see it, once we really see our experience for what it is, and we have this bigger growing sense of who and what we are beyond this experience, and by the way, I don't know who and what we are. Like, I'm not saying that you get that nailed down. I'm just saying kind of what I think you get already is it's a, it's a bigger feeling into something. If, if nothing else, it's a knowing that how things appear and look are not really how they are. That's, that's plenty. So that, that continues to grow. So I say, and you call me on it, that once we really see it, it kind of, it kind of loses its power. Now, it's true and it's not true. And true is not even a good word there. But I think, I think it's one of those things that looks like it's inconsistent, looks like it should be an either or, and it's a both. It's an and. So I'll just speak for me personally, like absolutely over the past nine or 10 years or so, seeing more about that there's something beyond the appearance of things in life, that there's something beyond our psychology that, that makes it so that we don't need to muck around in our psychology and fix things there, that there's another place to look. Absolutely, absolutely, without question, has has made experience feel a little different in that 
when I'm really caught up, when I'm feeling horrible, when I'm feeling great. Like I, I just see it differently. I don't even know how, well, how to put words around it, but it feels different. It feels safer. It doesn't feel like anything I need to step in and fix a lot of the time. And there's just a deeper knowing that it doesn't mean so much. It's not personal. It's a, I'm okay, regardless of what's moving through. And so that's, that's, and that's my experience is like, yes, there's so much more of that, of that feeling of safety. And so what that probably looks like in a week, let's say, is yeah, my mind says, that's wrong, that should have happened, that's unfair, I can't believe he, I can't believe she. And, and it just, I don't know, the feeling, the tight feeling of that just kind of like, oh, okay, that's not a place I need to go. It, it kind of dissolves more quickly before it turns into something I'm going to act on or, or make bigger. In general. <laughs> now, now, this is where, again, it's an and. So, yes, there's that. But what you're asking is, what am I doing wrong that it doesn't feel like that for me? Nothing. So, what we're not saying is that it will always be like that. What we're not saying is that there's something you have to do to make your experience feel that way, or that if your experience doesn't feel like that in any given moment, you're doing something wrong. Not at all. Not at all. Again, it's just a simple looking in this direction and kind of just exploring, like, wow, isn't it interesting? What if, what if it's true that my psychology does tell all kinds of stories and, and produce all kinds of feelings and produce all kinds of urges and my body wants to do certain things to feel a certain way? And what if there's something beyond that psychology? Like you just keep exploring that and that's where your skills start to tip. There's absolutely nothing wrong, nothing you're missing, nothing you, you know, aren't seeing when it doesn't feel that way. It's just that it doesn't feel that way sometimes. I hope that makes sense. It doesn't feel that way sometimes. And the more you stay in this conversation and keep exploring it, in general, it does. It does more and more. It's never perfect as far as I've seen, but more and more the scales start to tip. So I'm just going to look at your question and make sure I didn't miss anything in that. Um, I just wish I understood what's missing for me to relax into this new vision of my thoughts. Nothing's missing. Nothing's missing. It's just new. I mean, it's brand new, really, relatively speaking. It's brand new. It's brand new for all of us, relatively speaking. We've grown up in our psychology, right? And people pointing us there saying, fix this, do that. What do you think? What do you feel? You know, like. It's new for all of us, so you're not doing anything wrong. And it gets easier and better and clearer in general the more we just look and stay in this conversation, and that's it. So I think you're doing great. I think the only thing you're really up against is your own mind saying, you're not there yet, and what's wrong? Like what you said here, that it's scaring me that I'm, I'm feeling stuck again. Well, feeling stuck again and expecting some expecting it to look a certain way or expecting some outcome that's thinking too it's it's just, you know that's psychology too will give any that so you don't have to take that so seriously you kind of feel it you'll get caught up it won't feel good okay you're human and then that'll move through and then you just go back to looking toward toward that bigger expansive sense of things that's resonated with you so deeply and it will continue to i know it will so um Oh, one more thing I just wanted to say, where you ask at the very end, is it just about getting used to it? Yes. Getting used to it, meaning getting this big, continuing to kind of look in the direction of this much bigger sense of you and life and what experience is and all that, right? So it is about kind of getting used to it. And I, I don't know if I'd say it that way, but kind of, I mean, that's, I think that's what you're pointing to. But then you say, and keeping at it until it's effortless. And I just, again, want to remind you, there's nothing to keep at. So it's not, it's not that this effortful thing becomes effortless. It may feel a little effortful. You might be reminding yourself stuff in the beginning, but that's, that doesn't, that's okay. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's not like, oh, let me keep at it and keep reminding myself and eventually it becomes effortless. It just, you're just reminding yourself a lot right now because it's new, right? It's like, oh, what's that verb? How do you say that word in Spanish? You do that. And then you're like, oh, there's the word. It's 
that's fine. It's no big deal. It's something new. But as you keep studying Spanish, you get more and more fluent in Spanish. And as you stay in this conversation and keep looking in this new paradigm, you get more and more fluent in it. And it's really awesome. And you, it's already happening for you. So thank you so much. I hope this question, this applies to everyone. Everything we talk about here does. But So I hope it's helpful to others. Um, thank you so much for asking it. And what else? That's it. I'll see you back here next Monday. Have a great week.